This video is about three different things that can make the chlorine in your swimming pool not effective. And what I mean by not effective is, is you can measure the water, you can test it, you can see that there's chlorine in the water, but the end result is that it's just not working. You know, your water could be cloudy or it could be green and you can't figure out why is my chlorine not doing what it's supposed to do in the water. And the first reason that I would look at is what is the pH of the water? There's an optimal pH range for the water for bather comfort, but there's also an optimal pH range for the effectiveness of chlorine. And it's actually pretty low. It's a lot lower of a pH than you would ever want to swim in or bathe in. And it's, you know, closer to like beer or black coffee kind of pH, very acidic. And so when the pH of the water is 8 or 8.2 plus, it's very alkaline or very basic water. And it's far from optimum for your chlorine. And that's one of the reasons why you could have chlorine in your water, but it's just not able to do its job. You could have a high pH level like you might commonly see in a saltwater chlorine swimming pool. They tend to have very high pH levels, and as a result, the chlorine's really not able to do its job in the water. So what's another reason that chlorine might be in the water, but it can't really do its job, or it's not as effective as it could be or should be? You could have high phosphate levels. Uh, phosphates are kind of like a superfood for algae, and you get them from sort contaminated source water or detergents and, and soaps, or especially fertilizer. That's a big one. There's a lot of phosphates in fertilizer. And phosphates are so important, we measure them in parts per billion instead of parts per million, like a lot of other things in swimming pools. So if you have about 500 parts per billion of phosphates in your pool water, your chlorine will not be as able to do its job as it should be at the point that you reach 1000 or more parts per billion of phosphates in your water the chlorine is largely ineffective and at 2000 parts per billion or more you're going to really struggle to not have green water because algae is going to be growing so readily so even though you could have chlorine in the water it's just not able to do its job and that brings me to the third point which is cyanuric acid uh, cyanuric acid or CYA or stabilizer or water conditioner, these are all the same thing. And it's basically just the sunscreen for your chlorine. At 30 to 50 parts per million, ideally, this will prevent the UV from burning off the chlorine in your pool every day. But when those CYA levels or the cyanuric acid levels in your water get above 30 to 50 into the 80 or 100 parts per million or more range, the chlorine in your water is largely ineffective. When you get to the range of 150 plus parts per million for cyanuric acid, the chlorine basically is totally ineffective. And even though you can measure the water and you have the free chlorine level that you normally maintain, you know, two to four parts per million, something like that, it's just largely not able to do its job and your water will be green and you can't figure out why because you think you have chlorine but the chlorine's not able to do the job. So it's more important to understand that it's not just about having chlorine. There's a balance equation happening with your water, and there's a lot of different parameters that all have to be in the right range for this whole system to work together. And chlorine is one of the most, probably the most important part of the system. So it's helpful to you to learn what prevents chlorine from doing its job so that you can avoid those situations. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.